Hey there, and welcome to another video in my YouTube channel. My name is Alex. Good that you're here to watch about this nice feature that you can implement if you have Microsoft Defend for Endpoint, where you can go and stop users from accessing certain web content or, or web applications. Also, if you have Defender for Cloud Apps, which is an addition for your E3 license, or it's part of Microsoft 365 E5, you can also create policies to deploy or to stop users from accessing applications that, well, you feel they shouldn't be using because of the lack of security on those applications. As always, if you uh, like this video, then please hit that thumbs up button. And if you uh, want to be notified about any new videos that I post on my channel, subscribe and well, enjoy. So let's get started in how we can block users from accessing applications on the web via Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. So let's switch to my Microsoft 365 environment. This is the uh, the Defender portal. Uh, actually, something that I found out recently is that you can go to this URL here, defender.microsoft.com. This will take you to the Microsoft 365 Defender environment. Usually you would go there via security.microsoft.com, but now recently Microsoft also added defender.microsoft.com. So if we want to implement the blockage of applications for users. One of the things that we need to do is obviously we have to have our devices enrolled into Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Now, if you want to learn how to do so, check out one of my other videos. It's here on the channel. Now, if devices are indeed configured to work with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, then one of the things you might want to do is go into the settings of Microsoft 365 Defender, open up the endpoint view, and here, if we go into our management components, we have, for example, something called web content filtering. And this allows us to, well, create web content filters for our users. For example, you can block certain categories of well, web applications or content so users are only browsing in a safe way. This actually works pretty neatly. Another option is to work with indicators where you can, for example, block files based on their hashes. For users, you can block IP addresses for users. And one of the components that we are going to check out, uh, we are going to focus on is blocking URLs and domains. And as you can see, and we can go and block up to 15,000 different indicators, which is file hashes, IP addresses, URLs, domains, and, and certain certificates. Um, obviously, whenever you want to demonstrate this stuff, Microsoft 365 decides to become very, very slow on you. Uh, but this is actually not the main part of this presentation. Um, here we can see that there is a lot of web applications that I have been blocking. Now, one of the things that I didn't do is go in here and, for example, add an item here where I could just go in and, and add all the different uh, uh, fields myself. For example, you can set up a, a domain, for example, where you can say uh, uh, the, the test you want to block, there's an expiration date. Um, you can also check out, by the way, statistics, which is quite nice. It will show whether or not there is information about um, the application itself. So it shows what kind of app this is. So here we can see that um, there is no active verdict, a verdict in threat intelligence. So that there's nothing bad going on with this application. You can actually open up that URL if you want to. Um, however, um, well, and obviously the option is that we can block the execution or warn, audit, or allow the app. And then we can also tell who in the organization is going to, uh, who is going to, uh, well, get this policy applied. The thing is that we 
are not we don't have time enough to go and, and figure out ourselves what applications we want our users to use and, and, and which ones they, they, they would not allow to be used. Um, and luckily for that, if you have a Microsoft 365 E5 license or if you have the addition for Microsoft 365, uh, sorry, the, the Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps into uh, and you added that to your E3 license, then there is something called the Cloud App Security here. And we can open up, for example, the Cloud Application Catalog. The Cloud Application Catalog is a database which is contained by Microsoft. And what they do is they, um, well, they, they, they check out all kinds of different web applications. And you can see, for example, in the content management division we have all kinds of applications and all of those applications they get scored some applications they get like uh, uh, eight or seven points out of ten um, and if you go further down the down the down the road uh, you will see that some applications they get well not a very brilliant score six out of ten here but that is because well microsoft investigated this and they found that this sample application does not support, for example, multi-factor authentication, data classification, or in the compliance department, they may not be supporting ISO stuff. Um, also, we monitor applications for legal. Now, one of the nice little tricks we can do in Microsoft Defender for cloud applications, we have this option here to either sanction or unsanction an application. And one of the things we can do is we can, for example, unsanction the application. And if we do so, then that application will be marked as unsanctioned. And for Microsoft 365 Defender for Endpoints, this is a trigger to block access to those applications. So, for example, we could also go back to the complete list of applications and for example we can search for an application that I do not really like um, we transfer so for example one of the things that I have done in my in my environment here I have tagged the web application we transfer as a unsanctioned application now so far um, just unsanctioning the application will uh, will not disallow us to connect anywhere the thing is we need to have the microsoft defender for endpoint client installed and configured to help defender for cloud apps out here oh by the way if you want to block a lot of applications in one go one of the things that we can do is we can um one of the things we can do is we can go and, for example, create filters here and for only show applications that score, let's say, very, very low in the organization. So any applications that scores between zero and two, I might want to block in one go. One of the things we can do is then um, also choose to, well, hit that block button or unsanction button, or we can go and create a new policy based on my search criteria here and then for example we can go and say hey if any application that is having a score between zero and two i want to go and tag the application as unsanctioned here if you do that then you will be well blocking a lot of applications in one go the result of doing this we can do we can check out on my windows machine here for example i can open up a browser here and if I want to check whether or not a user is able to connect to WeTransfer like that, on this device, the Defender for Endpoint client is active, we could now see that WeTransfer.com is blocked by the IT administrator. And actually here the user can also see that this is in fact, um, well, an app that we are not supposed to be using. And that is what we can do when it comes to getting those um, applications uh, blocked for um, blocked for users on Windows. The cool part is that um, you may also see 
um, users connecting to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint from other devices than um, from other devices than Windows devices. So, for example, if we have a mobile device here, this is my iPhone. If I want to connect to WeTransfer.com, let me make sure to enter to click the right button here. Now, what we'll notice is that this could also be blocked. Now, what we can do here is, for example, open up the Defender app. This is the Microsoft 365 Defender for Endpoint client. It's active, as you can see. Um, if I would go into my Safari browser in iOS and I want to try to connect to WeTransfer, we get an error message that says Safari cannot open this page. If I would go check back with Defender for Endpoint, we can now see that one link is indeed blocked for my user. And that allows us to, well, block applications for various operating systems via Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And if you have the feature, if you have enabled it for your organization, there is also Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps that can, well, speed up that process for you. So, there we have it. This is how we can control users' behavior on your devices based on the Defender for Endpoints, the Defender for Cloud Apps, and, well, the, the, the ability to block applications for your users. If you like this video, well, then well, put up the thumbs up button because that really helps the channel out. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you didn't do so. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please let me know in the comment section down below. I, I'm happy to try and answer all your questions you might have about this. Um, well, thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. And um, hopefully we will see each other in a next video on my YouTube channel. So thank you very much and goodbye.